All right, welcome back. We are continuing our map system. In the last couple of videos, we got things set up and we also created our scrolling feature and gave the quit button some functionality. I'm going to close these groups up. And in this video, we are going to make it to where if we tap on or click on one of these level objects, it will take us to the corresponding level. So back on our map event sheet, I'm going to create a new group. I'm going to call this map level. And inside that group, I'll add an event in our input folder. I'm going to grab the touch. I'm going to say on tap object. And that object is going to be object level one. Now, unfortunately, we're going to have to do this same thing for each level. But once we get this uh, block of code set up, we'll be able to copy it and just change a couple of things each time. I want to be able to tap on the object, the, the castle level object, and it take us to that level. And we could just go to uh, like a, a go to level or go to layout. Then each time we copy this for uh, each level that we, we make in this game, I'd have to go back into this and change the name of the layout each time. And we can actually, I'm going to exit out of that, we can actually save us a little bit of time and effort by implementing a new variable and making a function that will uh, help cut out some of the steps for us. I'm going to go over to our global variables and I'm going to right click and add another global variable and I'm going to call this one level playing and then I'm just gonna add me a little description so I know what this is number value is the name of the current level the player is playing I'm gonna hit OK and you see it shows up over here on the right side of our variable. Fix my spelling error there. Number value is the name of the current level that the player is playing. Take this top one here, this top comment. I'm going to copy and paste it. Then I'm going to go into it and change this to say levels uh, system. Okay, and then I'm going to take our level playing and slide it up in there. So now we have another little section for our global variables. Uh, we will add a couple more into this before we are done with our map system. So back on our map event sheet, I'm going to add an action to our tap gesture event. Go to system, set value, and find that level playing. And this is going to be our level one object. So I'm going to say that is one for the value. This value of this variable is going to set to the number of the level that we're playing. So now I want to tell this code to go to the level that this object is displaying. So we can use this variable that way. So back over in our functions tab, I'm going to create another group here. And I'm going to call this go to level. Right click and say add function. And we're going to create a new function. And this is going to be called go to level. And then in this go to level function, we can add an action, go to our system, and say go to. And normally we use this go to layout. That'll take us specifically to a layout that we choose from a drop down menu. And that drop down menu displays all the layouts that we've created so far but I want to be able to go to any layout that I tell it to without having to go in and select it each time. So we're going to go to go to layout by name. And the name of the layout is going to go in between these quotation marks. So if you remember, we named all our levels a specific way. And that specific way was in all caps, level, underscore, and then the number of the level. And the number of the level was on the end. So I'm going to leave level underscore in between the two quotation marks. And then I'm going to use the variable that we just created to read the number of the level. And that will add that number to the end of this string here. And we'll never have to go back in and change the 
go to layout. After the last quotation mark, we'll add an ampersand and then the name of that variable, which was level playing. Say done. And I'll just show you real quick. Uh, over here in our layouts folder, our layout is level underscore one. And so our level two will say level underscore two, level underscore three, and so on. And this will always read that number and we won't have to go back in and change it. Okay, so let's slide this function into that group if you haven't already. And then I'm gonna go back over to the map event sheet. Down here, I'm gonna add an action, go to our functions, and I'm gonna call go to level. So let's go ahead and make sure our map is our last layout to be active. And I'm gonna play it. And then we can scroll, everything's functioning like it should. And you know, if I click on these objects, nothing happens because there's nothing set up for them. But if I click on the level one, it takes us to level one. So that works. However, it's just checking to see if we tapped on the object itself. But if it is grayed out and has the swords across it, that means that the level is locked. And we don't want that to be the case. So back on our map event sheet, over here in this uh, blank area under our touch event, I'm going to double click to add another condition. And I'm gonna go into our sprites, our levels, and I'm gonna get OBJ level one. And I'm gonna check to see what frame it is on. So go to compare frame. Let's put that in there. And then we wanna know if it is not locked. So if it is not on animation frame zero, which is the first frame of any animation, then we won't be able to play that level. So we have equal to zero, but we want not equal to zero. So I'm gonna say not equal to zero. As long as the animation frame is not equal to zero, then we can run this code. But if it is zero, then that means it's locked and we can't. So any other frame and we'll be able to play the level. That means if it's unlocked, we can play it. If you've played it and you only earned one crown and you want to go back and try to beat that, you'll still be able to because it won't be on animation frame zero. So let's go ahead and play this again. And we have exactly what we had before. And now when I click on our level one, it doesn't let me in. So that is the functionality of our tap the object and go to the level. I'm gonna stretch this out so I can see it. Select somewhere over here and this will highlight this entire block of code. On my keyboard, control C to copy, control V to paste. And that is going to be our level two. We'll go in and change some things here in just a second, but I'm going to make all of our levels. So that's level two. I'm just gonna hit control V to paste again. That's three, four, five, six, and seven. So you should have seven total blocks of code here. Highlight on our second one here and hit R on our keyboard and it asks us to pick the object to replace OBJ level one. And that's going to be OBJ level two. And we can do that for all of these. So this one will be OBJ level three, four, five, six, and seven. And we don't want to do level eight because remember, we made this our coming soon. So this one's not a level yet. This just says, hey, we have more levels coming. We also need to change this object as well because we want to know if each individual object is on animation frame zero or not. That's one. We'll change this to two. So hit R on the keyboard and we'll do the same thing we just did Yours should look like this so far. We have OBJ level one, level two, level three, level four, five, six, seven. Okay, one last thing to change is our global variable. We want to set the level playing, which is what our function reads, to the level that it is. So this is level one. This will be level two.
and that is actually all we need to do to this group. This will let us go to whatever level is corresponding with our objects on our map. All right, that is going to wrap it up for this video. In the next video, we will work on unlocking these levels so that only the ones that we have earned are unlocked and the rest will stay locked until we have passed the level before it. So that will take place in the next video. I will see you there and don't forget to save.